Over My Hero Academia's run, Horikoshi has dreamed up some pretty wild quirks. Some abilities seem like they really could be a part of a natural evolution, but others look like something out of Videodrome, if you know that reference. How do quirks work? Well, we're still figuring it out, and sometimes it feels like Horikoshi is too, but let's look into what we know so far. We gotta start with the origins. That precious glowing baby, also known as the Luminous Baby, was the first quirk user. Born in China, the baby heralded a new phase in humanity's evolution. Fast forward to present day, and about 80% of the population has quirks. But in the grand scheme of things, quirks haven't been around that long, just a few generations. Deku's mom, Inko, is a fourth generation quirk user. From that, we can assume it's probably only been 100 to 200 years since the luminescent baby rolled up to the scene, so there's still a ton of stuff that humanity and we humble viewers don't know about quirks. I mean, to start things off, I'm wondering how being able to spit tape out of your elbow counts as humanity's next evolution. Or like meatball, what environmental factors make it necessary for humanity to evolve to be able to turn each other into horrifying lumps of flesh? Like that was really gross. Humans are already the dominant species and we wrecked the earth. If anything, we need to chill, not suddenly have super powered abilities that allow us to wreck sh more completely and efficiently. Maybe quirks are going to eventually help us survive our self-made apocalypse, or maybe they'll just make the apocalypse extra wild. Who knows? It's all the fun. Either way, it's the missing joint in quirk user's pinky toe that solidifies the case about evolution. All quirk users have only one joint in their pinky toe. I'm not sure why losing a joint in the most useless toe on our whole foot means I can shoot some men out of my mouth or pull my eyes out of my head but I'll accept it. Humans that are born quirkless, like Deku, have two joints in their pinky toe. Uh, fun fact, the term quirk is nowhere to be found in the original release of My Hero Academia. In Japan, instead of quirk, they say kose, which roughly translates to individuality. Quirk came into vogue because before Viz, My Hero Academia's American publisher, picked up the series, a scanlation group called Fallen Angel Scans translated every chapter, and their translator, Gliblord, used quirk as a flowery way to say individuality. Viz initially used individuality in their translation, but the fandom was very attached to quirk, so they pushed back. Quirk has since become the canon term to describe abilities in My Hero Academia for most countries outside of Japan. Never forget the My Hero pioneers. Quirk users often manifest their quirk by age four. However, users can manifest their quirks as early as birth. For example, when Present Mike was born, he famously damaged the eardrums of the doctor and his parents with his uncontrolled quirk-powered cry. After you discover your quirk, the next step is to develop your quirk through training. And knowing your quirk type is a huge boon. What exactly is a quirk type? So glad you asked. Quirk types are the three classifications that every quirk falls under. Emitter, transformation, and mutant. When I first learned about quirk types, I was pretty pumped because to be honest, I've spent many, many sleepless hours trying to figure out if Tokoyami has a bird head because Dark Shadow is a bird beast or if Dark Shadow is a bird beast because Tokoyami has a bird head. Seriously, it's like the chicken or the egg thing. But the short answer is it all comes down to quirk types and inheritance. Let's start by looking at the emitter type. This is by far the most common type of quirk, and you might be surprised by some emitter users, but that just goes to show how wide the variety of emitter quirks is. Uraraka has an emitter type quirk. So do Sato, Mina, Shinso, Todoroki, and Eraserhead. 13's Black Holes, emitter type. Emitter type quirks can alter the state of things around them, like Shigaraki's decay or Eraserhead's erasure. They can also cause their users to produce substances from their bodies, like Mina's acid or Todoroki's icy hot. Sometimes they're able to produce the same effect within their bodies, Body, as long as it doesn't physically alter the user. Many emitter users can suffer from overuse backlash though. If Todoroki uses either one of his temperature controlling abilities for too long, he's susceptible to either burning his body or getting hypothermia. When Uraraka makes her body weightless, it's almost impossible for her to avoid getting nauseous. When Aoyama fires his quirk, he's prone to stomach aches. Neither of the more body integrated quirk types, Transformation and Munit, have this issue. You might be surprised by what qualifies as an emitter quirk. I mean, one for all is considered in emitter type. There's nothing else like it anywhere in the world, and it might be the only emitter quirk capable of physically altering its user. Gotta love All Might's muscle form. Ah, uh, I don't know. Is it, ha ha, is it hot? You know, I'm just gonna sort of flex. And yet, it's in the same class as the quirk that forces other people to laugh really hard. Uh, yep, Miss Joke and All Might are in the exact same category emitter. 
Up next is the rarest quirk type, transformation. Folks with a transformation quirk have to activate their quirks through concentration and can usually only use their quirks for a limited amount of time. They can transform their own bodies like Class 1A and 1B horror bodies, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu, or enhance them like Mountain Lady. We can thank transformation quirks for horrifying villains like Moonfish with his blade tooth quirk. And how about the pinnacle of human evolution, Shiketsu Hai's own Seiji Shishikura. His quirk lets him turn people into a dish of Granny Kurtz meatball delight, which sounds gross and also tastes like that. Seiji, by the way, is a huge outlier when it comes to transformation quirk. His quirk, Meatball, is the only known transformation quirk that transforms somebody else rather than the user. Uh. Wacky transformation quirks like Meatball demonstrate what a unique superhero story My Hero Academia is. A lot of emitter quirks remind us of traditional superpowers. Todoroki isn't the only dude who throws ice at people. But transformation quirks leave me with some questions. I have no idea where Ed Shot's body goes when he uses photo body, let alone to Tommy's turtle-like body. She was straight up disturbing. Uh. Now, transformation quirks are definitely cool, but if you're looking for the most striking quirk type, that's gotta be mutant. This one might be the easiest to describe and identify because these quirks permanently alter the way their user looks. Froppy, the invisible girl Hagakure, Sero, and Ida all have mutant quirks. Then there's Selkie, the cute seal man, and we can't forget Shoji with his dupla arms. Their bodies are altered by their quirks, meaning that their quirks are passively active and don't require activation. It's just like having another limb or two. Literally. As a bonus, mutant quirks are immune to Erasure's quirk nullification. Sorry, Eraserhead, all the eye drops in the world won't get rid of those extra arms. But there are drawbacks too, like trying to find pants that will fit your tail. Mutants are the best, and I have a lot of respect for Horikoshi making a society where some people look like Cousin It, and that's just how it is. I mean, Gang Orga? Gotta love his big, sleek, toothy face. Mutant quirks are where Horikoshi really goes all in. But they might just be an excuse for Horikoshi to use character designs from his first series, Omakagoki Zoo. And I can't hate on him for blurring the lines a little bit to make the occasional Birdman, right? But let's talk a little about how quirks are inherited and of course, the singularity. Unfortunately for me and 20% of the population, quirks are inherited genetically for the most part at least. Parents with compatible quirks have the potential to produce a child with a combo quirk, like Bakugo's explosion and Todoroki's icy hot ability. But seeing as Todoroki is the fourth child in his family and the first to strike a good balance between the fire and ice quirks, perfect combinations seem to be somewhat rare. And if you wanna see some fantasy ships come to life, plug, uh, check out our My Hero Babies series. It's really good. I, ooh. Let's drop that. Because of combo quirk possibilities, the new generation of quirk users have more powerful and versatile abilities than their parents. Quirks also seem to operate under the same principles as dominant and recessive genes. All right, let me throw it back to your middle school science class real quick. In real life, dominant and recessive genes determine the likelihood you'll inherit certain traits from your parents. As the name implies, dominant genes will always overpower recessive genes. Quirks seem to also fall under dominant and recessive categories when determining the probability that an offspring will inherit a quirk. The Edith family's engine quirk seems to be a dominant gene. Despite having multiple generations of quirk users and likely at least one parent with a different quirk, the engine quirk persists. On the other hand, recessive genes are less likely to be inherited. Although he has two parents with quirks, Deku was born without a quirk. This could be because both Deku's parents have dominant no quirk genes somewhere that overpower their recessive quirk genes. So despite being quirkless, Deku still carries his parents' quirk genes. So if Deku had a kid, his kid could have either one of Deku's parents' quirks. New generations of quirk users have started showing something we can call mini mutations. And here is where we loop back to that burning question I posed earlier. What's the deal with Tokiyami's design? He has completely human body, but a bird-like head. It's totally a mutation, but his quirk is Dark Shadow. It looks like aspects of the mutation can be passed down genetically without passing down the actual powers associated with the original mutation. Let's call these mini mutations. The same thing occurs with Koji. He definitely inherited that rocky head from his mom, but doesn't seem to have anything to do with his quirk. He'd still be able to use his Anna voice even if he didn't look like the unfinished fifth Mount Rushmore head. Similarly, Tokiyami must have inherited his bird head from one of his relatives who likely had the full bird mutation quirk. His emitter type quirk 
Dark Shadow is his actual quirk. As for Mina, her pink skin apparently is a result of her acid, but the horns are from an inherited mini mutation. The inherited mini mutation quirk likely comes from the fact that quirks can combine and grow in strength over generations. This leads to My Hero Academia's looming natural quirk disaster, a phenomenon called the quirk singularity. The theory is that quirks will eventually become so hybridized that quirk users are no longer able to control them. In a worst case scenario, everyone would be like mutant Kevin from Ben 10. Not fun. I get the feeling we'll see this touched on closer to the series' final chapters. We've already seen certain quirks get out of hand in My Hero Academia's main cast. Tokiyami struggles to control Dark Shadow's strength in poorly lit locations, and there are plenty of quirks that could accidentally create a friendly fire situation. I'm looking at you, present Mike. I don't think Tokiyami will be the last confusing quirk user we'll see because we just don't know that much about quirks yet. Give it another 100 years. Besides that, Horikoshi can and should take creative liberties. Me personally, I'd rather live in a world with Cementos and his teeny tiny ponytail than one without him. And for those of you who still want more answers, well, I'm with you, all right? This is just the beginning. This introductory course only scratches the surface of quirks. We'll know more as things progress. Class dismissed. I'm Kurt, and if you like this video, let us know, and we might make a Quirkology 201. It'd probably be 102 because it's an introductory course. You know what? It's okay. Thank you for watching in the robot, your anime explainer.